I've been watching more of Vouch's videos recently. Yes, I know, I talk about him a lot. I know, I know, I'm kind of obsessed with him. I promise you, this is gonna be the last fucking time that I'm gonna talk about Vosh. Okay? Okay. So, here's the thing. Vosh recently did a video commenting on one of Trump's latest speeches at Mount Rushmore. And at the end of the video, he graded Trump on whether or not Trump is a quote-unquote fascist based on this weird-ass test called the Ur fascism test. And I'm just and I'm just looking at this, and then I freaking like Google this, and I'm like, what the hell is this Ur fascism shit? What the heck? So then I Google it, and it turns out it was part of this essay that was published in like the 1990s by this weird freaking lefty Italian novelist guy. I I don't even know how to freaking pronounce his name. And this, Ita this random Italian guy, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, gave 14 points of what he thinks is fascism. Now, of course, keep in mind that when the left says fascism, they don't necessarily mean the same thing as what sane people talk about when they mean fascism. But that's beside the point. The point is that this or fascism test is essentially like a way of demonizing people that the people on like the anarchist side of things don't agree with because the Ur fascism test combines psychological qualities that they think fascists suffer such as the cult of tradition with outright psychopathic quali qualities such as disdain for the weak. The point of this is, of course, to categorize their opposition as having psychological problems. So then I thought to myself, what if the right wing had an Ur-Communism test or an Ur-SJW test in order to help categorize left-wingers as either SJWs or communists? So. And this, like, harps on a question that I got, like, a while back from somebody on the internet, which is, what the heck is the dif- what the heck is a- eh. What the heck is the difference between a social justice warrior and just a regular lefty? Now, this is actually a good question, because, like, right-wingers, especially in, like, 2016, would, like, throw around the term SJW like it's nothing, but we never really- defined what an SJW is, we just freaking, we just had a stereotype in our head and we, you know, called anyone who fit that stereotype an SJW. So I decided to create my own Ur communism test or Ur social justice warrior test, whatever you want to call it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show the viewer the different things on this test that I created, and then we're going to grade Vosh and see if Vosh pa passes. Eh, I can't talk today. Passes the Ur communism test. So the first thing is number one: the belief that every person starts out as a blank slate, and that how a person or a group of people develops is a product of nurture. Parentheses, environmental determinism, close parentheses. This first one's obvious. This obviously describes Vosh to a T. Second one, the belief that all or most inequalities between people and groups of people are the product of some type of systemic discrimination. Again, this describes Vosh to a T. Three, the belief that hate speech should be prohibited by governments and or social media platforms. Uh, Vosh has never, at least as far as I know, came out and said that governments should prohibit hate speech, but he has said that social media companies should do it, so he gets a check on number three. Number four, the belief in equality of outcome. Yes, Vosh very much believes in 
what right-wingers char would characterize as equality of outcome. Five, the belief that the means of production should never be owned by private business people. This describes Foch to a T. Six, the belief that illegal immigrants should be given citizenship in the nation state in which they came. Yes, Vosch has come out in favor of open borders, so he gets a check for number six. Number seven, the promotion and or acceptance of deviant social behaviors. Uh, Vosch is pro-trans. I would categorize transgenderism as a deviant sexual behavior, so Vosch gets a check on that one. Hello, so I just wanted to quickly clarify what I mean when I say that transgenderism is a deviant sexual behavior. Um, I, I know that, and I wanted to clarify this because I know that transgenderism in and of itself is not a deviant sexual behavior, but it can be argued that to some degree it is a deviant sexual behavior because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, people are transgender because they are aroused by the idea of being the, uh, the opposite of what they truly are. Okay, just wanted to quickly clarify that. Thank you. So, so far he's passed all of this. Okay. Number eight. The belief in the Whig view of history. Uh, for those of you don't, that don't know, the Whig view of history is basically the view of history of like continuous, never-ending social progress. We're, we're gaining more and more social progress in the same way that we're gaining more and more technology. We're, or we're getting better ideas in the same way that we're getting better and better technology. That's basically the Whig view of history in a nutshell. Uh, Vosch definitely does believe in this, so he gets a check on that one. Number nine, desire for a more globalized world or policies which go in that direction. Uh, Vosch is in favor of free trade and open borders, so he gets a check on that one. Number ten, disdain for traditional gender roles. Uh, I'm not sure what Vosch's position on traditional gender roles are, but he's more or less fairly progressive on, ge on issues such as gender, so we can infer that he would be against traditional gender roles, so I'll give him a check on that one. Number 11, militant atheism, parentheses, belief that religion is not only false but fundamentally destructive and should not exist. Uh, Vosh is not a militant atheist. He's never came out and said that religion is inherently bad. He doesn't push militant atheism, so he doesn't get a check on that one. Number 12, cult-like worship of science and or academia, especially in social science. This absolutely describes Vosh to a T. He gets a check on that one. Number 13, is always pushing for more political change even when getting 100% of what one wants. Again, this describes Vosh to a T. Check for him. Number 14, constant use or misuse of words with negative connotations or redefining of words to demonize political opponents. Yeah, Vosh calls everybody fascist, so he gets a check on that one. Okay, so now you know all of the different criteria for an er SJW or an er communist. And we shall grade Vosh now. Alrighty, so I did the math, and turns out Vosh got a 92.86 on my er communism test. And if you round that up, that means 93. Oh god, I actually had to do freaking math. <laughs> yeah, I ain't good at math, but like, after punching in numbers on the calculator and Googling some stuff, and of course remembering the stuff that I learned in freaking middle school, the answer is Vosh got a 93% on my Ur communism test. So Vosh passed. Okay, that's basically it. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video or agreed with anything that I said or you want me to kill my brain cells by roasting Vosh more, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. No more Vosh for this freaking channel. There's, there's only so much of his freaking content that I can take. Uh, okay. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or agreed with anything that I said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. This is Wolf signing out.